sisters in Christ. Good afternoon, fathers. Today we celebrate um, the memorial of St. Anthony Abbott, who was a man who obeyed the word of God. He was asked to sell everything he owned and give the money to the poor. And in obedience, he did it. Obedience, therefore, beloved people of God, is better than sacrifice. We shall see in the course of the Mass, in the course of the homily, how Saul was rejected because he disobeyed God. Let us continue to pray that the good Lord will instill in us that gift of humility and docility so that we may be hearers of the Word of God and doers of the Word of God. Today, we are also gathered here to pray for our dear brother, exactly 365 days that he departed from this world, our brother, Mr. Crispin Ogunshaye. We pray that the good Lord will continue to grant him merciful judgment and grant him a place in his kingdom. May the Lord continue to keep the wife and the children, and may the Lord continue to hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. To celebrate this Mass worthily, therefore, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of God, the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who brought the abbot St. Anthony to serve you by a wondrous way of life in the desert. Grant through his intercession that denying ourselves, we may always love you above all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Samuel said to Saul, Stop. I will tell you what the Lord said to me this night. And he said to him, Say on. And Samuel said, Though you are little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go, utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are all consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took off the spoil, sheep and oxen, the best of the things devoted to destruction to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gigal. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. The word of the Lord. 
to one whose way is blameless, and we show the salvation of God. I do not rebuke you for your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not take more bullocks from your farms, nor goats from among your herbs. How can you recite my commandments and take my covenants on your lips? You who despise correction and cast my words behind you. You do this, and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am like you? I accuse you and lay the charge before you. A sacrifice of praise gives me honor, and to one whose way is blameless, I will show the salvation of God. of the Lord is living and active, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it. The new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But new wine is for fresh skins. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Holy Gospel wipe away our sins. Amen. Let us be seated. Dear friends in Christ, we are presented with the rage, the anger of God towards Saul because of disobedience. And this led to the rejection of Saul as king. Just imagine a man of authority, a man in authority who should know better, who gives instruction and expect his subordinate to obey, that same man disobeys. It takes humility and submission to obey. May God continue to increase in us and put in us that gift of submission, that gift of humility, so that we may always obey through Christ our Lord. 
God asked him to go and engage in a battle. And this battle was for the purity and cleansing and the survival of the Israelite religion in the midst of the pagan worship. Saul did the direct opposite. His excuse for disobedience was to offer the booty as sacrifice to God. God does not take bribe. There is nothing like partial obedience. Obedience must be one way. It must be total. He spared the best of animals of the pagans and made sacrifice of these animals to the God of Israel, the most high God. That was like an insult. How can you present something for lower gods and you are presenting it to the most high God? It's like putting God side by side with other gods, the gods of the Amalekites. Obeying God's commandment, beloved people of God, is in itself a sacrifice. Sometimes it's not easy to keep the commandments of God. Sometimes it is not easy to obey, especially when there are huge benefits that may be lost or missed if we decide to obey. There are temptations that we face and pressures that we face in the world, in our places of work, in business. When we face these pressures, if we are not careful, we will yield to them because of what we stand to gain. We must call a spade a spade. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Disobedience is an act of arrogance and rebellion against God. Remember, it was through disobedience that our first parents, Adam and Eve, fell. That same disobedience brought Saul from grace to disgrace. May disobedience never bring us disgrace through Christ our Lord. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23. Sin, beloved people of God, removed his kingship. Sin can also remove our kingship and deny us of the favor and love of God. Sin is deceit. Sin is a shadow. Sin appears like enjoyment. It presents itself like something that is worthwhile. But in the real sense, we hurt ourselves when we sin. We hurt ourselves when we disobey. We end up in regret and we wish we did otherwise. Sometimes you go into sin and disobey. When you do that, you sit back and say, God, why did I do this? And you go into tears. We must be very, very careful. Sin is self-cheating. You cheat yourself when you sin. As I said, sin is like enjoyment. It could be sweet. But it's like the proverb, the adage in, among the Yorubas. The Yorubas say, e pang pare, paja. You see the worm, when an animal dies, you see the worm enjoying itself inside the body of that animal that is dead. You see the worm shining. But when the worm ends up eating the carcass of the animal, what happens to the worm? The worm dies off. The Yoruba say, e pang pare, paja. Jesus wants us to always put new wine into new wine skin. We must accept this teaching of obedience as something new. Pretend as if you never heard it before. And you're just hearing it for the first time. That obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. See this teaching of obedience, this challenge to obey as something new as we begin another week. As we begin another year. Let us put it into action. Let us be hearers of the word of God and doers of the word of God. 
And the life of St. Anthony Abbott that we celebrate today is a reflection of a man who obeyed God. He was so passionate about what he read in the Bible. He was asked, he read in the Bible in Matthew chapter 19, verse 2, if you want to be perfect, go sell all your possession and give the money to the poor, then come, follow me. And immediately he read this, it touched him. He saw it as a new teaching. It touched him and went deep into him. He decided to sell everything he had and give the money to the poor. How much more of the word of God do we hear and put into practice? Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And on this day we are gathered again to celebrate the life of one of us, Mr. Crispin Yomi Ogunsheye, who 365 days departed from this world. He was one of us. He was always in church. He played his own role. He has done his part. He has departed. He's telling us, hey, what you are, I have been. What I am, you will be. As we remember him today, let us continue to storm the heavens with prayer. That the Lord will grant him merciful judgment and grant him a place in his kingdom. And for those of us alive to mourn his demise, let us ask God to help us so that we may live holy life and obey the commandments of God. May the soul of our brother Crispin Yomi Ogunshaye and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. From the parish in Mokim, number 68, My sacrifice on yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for, for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our, our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Anthony be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that release from earthly attachments we may have our riches in you alone through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
the Lord of Light and Just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred Martins, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Christi Oshaya, you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters. Who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph as spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, whom we merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other this time of peace be just a Lord. Lamb of God. 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. It is time for the reception of Holy Communion. The grace of this Holy Mass is for everyone present, but Holy Communion is reserved for baptized and practicing Catholics who have prepared themselves to receive the Lord. We acknowledge in our midst our sisters and brothers of other religious denominations who have come to worship with us. We kindly request that you remain on your seats and pray along with the church. God bless us all. Amen. In two seven four two hundred and seventy four.
divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment done. If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have, give to the poor, and follow me, says the Lord. Let us rise and pray. Nourished for our healing by your sacrament, O Lord, may we escape every snare of the enemy unharmed, just as by your grace St. Anthony won glorious victories over the powers of darkness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is now time for Thanksgiving. We invite the Obunshaya family to please come forward with family, friends, and well wishers. One year memorial Thanksgiving of late Mr. Crispin Obunshaya. Oh, 
Satisfaction in their faith, we pray to the Lord. For those looking for jobs, that they may find jobs that will enhance their human dignity and with which they can make ends meet. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are retired after years of toil, that they may have peace and good health of mind and body to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we commit our workers and traders into your hands as they begin a new working week. Guide and protect them. Bless the work of their hands and grant progress and success to them in their work and trade. Remind all the workers 
that in the fields, companies, in factories, mines, and scientific laboratories, they are not walking, rejoicing, or suffering alone, but at their side is Jesus and Mary. We pray for your protection upon them and all who work with them. May they experience your love and kindness in what they do and be filled with joy at the end of the day. Grant them satisfaction in their work and bless their homes with your peace. We pray for those who are looking for employment. Grant them jobs that will enhance their human dignity and fill them with hope of a better future. We pray for those who are now retired after years of toil, that they may continue to grow gracefully with good health of mind and body. May they live to see their children's children and after a happy ripe old age, grant eternal salvation. Grant all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is good. And all the time. Please be seated for a while. I would want to introduce the priests on the altar, beginning with Reverend Father Sosumobi, who is representing the Archbishop, because Mrs. Ogunshola is a member of the Finance Council of the Archdiocese of Lagos. Father Sosumobi, please. Thank you very much for coming and representing the Archbishop. I want to introduce Reverend Father Obafemi Michael, who is also a friend of the family. Father Cosmos Modi, who is also a friend of the family. My associate priest, we are all here together. We are all members of the same family here. So, Mama Ogunshaye, please accept our sympathy again and know that we are with you in prayers. We pray that God will rest your husband and we pray for the entire family. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. And for all of you friends of the Yogunshaya family, we thank you very much for coming to stand by this family, especially at this time. May God continue to bless us and keep us in his peace through Christ our Lord. Let us now rise, bow down our heads, and pray for God's blessings. May the Lord Jesus be with you to protect you. Amen. May he be before you to lead you. Amen. May he be within you to keep you. Amen. May he be behind you to guide you. Amen. May he be around you to shield you. Amen. May he be above you to bless you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hymn 383 from the parish of 383.